Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis and let's continue talking about bleeding and coagulation disorders. I don't just produce individual videos, I produce playlists. So please subscribe and check my playlist, it's called Bleeding and Coagulation Disorders. In the previous videos we have talked about thrombomodulin, alpha-2 antiplasmin, plasminogen activator inhibitors, D-dimer and others. So again, please subscribe. Today we'll talk about Protein C and Protein S. These are vitamin K dependent factors and they are really important in stopping coagulation by inactivating factors 5 and 8. With that being said, now let's get started. As I've told you 17 times before, hemostasis has many steps. Vasoconstriction, temporary plate plug, coagulation, fibrolysis, and regeneration. We've talked about the, four, the first four, and now we'll talk about protein CNS, how to inhibit step number three. So before we inhibit step number three, let's first talk about step number three. This is the secondary hemostasis, also known as the clot formation or the thrombus formation. Nice. We have intrinsic and extrinsic pathway. To understand this, let's start from here. Fibrin. Fibrin is the hero. It's a fibrous protein and it's formed from fibrinogen, which is a precursor in activated protein. And in order to activate fibrinogen into fibrin, you need thrombin, the protein of the thrombus. Thrombin, again, is present in an activated precursor form called prothrombin. To activate prothrombin to thrombin, you need not just one guy, you need a committee, the Congressional Committee, consisting of two numbers and two words. What are the two numbers? Five and ten. The two words, calcium and phospholipid. To activate this committee, you have extrinsic pathway when you require something from outside of the blood vessel or intrinsic from when you require something from within the blood vessel. Extrinsic. What's outside of the blood vessel that's evidence for trauma? It's called the tissue factor because when you have trauma, the tissue is now being connected with the bloodstream. This is an evidence of trauma, disturbance of the endothelium and the subendothelial collagen and the basement membrane. So when you have the tissue factor coming in contact with the blood, it's an evidence of trauma. Tissue factor, activating factor 7 into 7a, will activate the congressional committee by activating factor 10, which is the most important factor, by the way. That's it for the extrinsic pathway. Now, if you'd like to inhibit the extrinsic pathway, you have tissue factor pathway inhibitor, or TFPI. Then, the intrinsic pathway. What's within the blood vessel? The subendothelial collagen, the basement membrane, the high molecular weight kininogen, the plasma calicrine. Very nice. This will activate factor 12 into 12a. Factor 12 will activate factor 11. Skip factor 10 because factor 10 is in the middle. Let's go to factor 9 and factor 8. When these are active, this is the cascade. Why do we need the cascade? I've told you before in my video, video on coagulation cascade. Now 10 is active into 10a. The committee will work to activate prothrombin into thrombin, fibrogen into fiber. Are we done? Not yet. The last factor you mentioned, the highest number was 12. Let's add factor 13 here to stabilize the fibrin into stabilized fibrin fibers. Who inhibits the intrinsic pathway? You have antithrombin 3. If it's antithrombin, it's going to inhibit the thrombin as well as 9, 10, 11, 12. Protein C and S, the topic of today's video, will inhibit factors 5 and 8. Factors 5 and 8 are part of the coagulation factors. In other words, factor 5 and 8 are pro-coagulation. Protein C and S, by definition, are anti-coagulation. They want you to bleed. We've talked about thrombomodulin in the previous video, which was amazing. You must watch it. Thrombin plus thrombomodulin, you have thrombin-thrombomodulin complex. Thrombomodulin is gonna modulate thrombin from being pro-coagulation into being anti-coagulation. So after forming this complex, we'll activate protein S, then protein C. S comes before C. I don't care about the alphabet right now. And then C will inactivate factors 5 and 8. Those are pro-coagulation. When you inactivate them, you're anti-coagulation. When you are walking down the street and you meet a medical student, ask them one question. What are the vitamin K dependent factors? And they will say, 
Okay, they are two, seven. How do we write seven? Seven, nine, and ten. Prothrombin, seven, nine, ten. That's it. That's what most students will tell you. But they will forget about protein C as well as protein S. So now whenever your professor asks you, please mention the vitamin K dependent factor. You have two, seven, nine, ten, protein C and protein S. Don't ever forget protein C and protein S. So protein C and protein S, they are vitamin K dependent factors. They are produced by the liver. What's the process? It's called gamma carboxylation. What's the name of the enzyme involved in gamma carboxylation? Let me know down below in the comments. Thrombin now will activate protein C. To activate protein C, you need protein S as well as thrombin, as well as thrombomodulin, as well as endothelial protein C receptor EPCR. So now protein C is active, we call it activated protein C or APC. This is very important. The activated protein C will inactivate the coagulation factors 5 and 8. So if 5 and 8 are accelerators to coagulation, protein C is a break on coagulation. So the mnemonic is protein S, protein C suppress coagulation. Accelerators of coagulations, breaks of coagulation. The accelerators include thrombin as well as all of the coagulation factors, including factors 5 and 8. The breaks include the anticoagulant, including thrombomodulin, and even protein C and S. So, please choose the correct answer. Patients who have a deficiency of protein C or protein S may suffer from bleeding or thrombosis. Please pause, and the answer is B. Thrombosis, protein C or activated protein C is the break, the break of coagulation. When you don't have a break, you have lots of accelerator of coagulation. When you have lots of coagulation, you thrombose. If you didn't answer that question correctly, maybe you suffered from congenital hypothyroidism when you were a baby. I'm not making fun of patients, I'm only making fun of you. Question number two. Patients who have familial thrombophilia were found to have A. Resistance to APC B. More sensitivity to APC Now please pause and the answer is A. Resistance to APC Now let me explain. Familial thrombophilia Philia means love they are lovers of thrombosis. They adore thrombosis. So they have lots of thrombosis going on. Okay, if you have lots of thrombosis going on, you are using the accelerator a lot. You are not using the brakes. Probably you have resistance to the brakes, resistance to the activated protein C. If you didn't answer this question correctly, chances are you have an extra chromosome. There is no shame in seeking help. Question number three. Factor V Leiden is a genetic disorder. Patients have a mutant factor V, which is resistance to inactivation by the activated protein C. This makes them more liable to bleeding or thrombosis. Now pause. And the answer here is B. Thrombosis. Factor V is not going to be inactivated. It's mutant. It's resistant. It's a son of a gun. It's not going to be inactivated. So when you have the accelerator that cannot be overridden by the brakes, now the brakes are useless. You have lots of acceleration. You have lots of thrombosis. If you didn't answer that question correctly, maybe you suffered from folate deficiency back in the days when you were in the womb. Oh, you're making fun of patients. No, first of all, I'm not making fun of patients. I've said it before many times. I'm only making fun of medical students who cannot answer the questions, okay? Clinical Pearl. Did you know that infusion of protein C can ameliorate or mitigate sepsis, meaning decrease the symptoms of sepsis? Really? Protein C will decrease? Yep. Drugs for that? Oh, they made it in a drug, man. It's called, what? what's that? Drotereg... Okay, whatever. Drotrecogen alpha. Drotrecogen, baby. Who named these things? Next, warfarin-induced skin necrosis. First of all, why? 
because warfarin inhibits the vitamin K dependent factors, which are protein C, protein S factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. However, warfarin inhibits protein C and S, the breaks, before it inhibits factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, the accelerators. When you inhibit the breaks before the accelerator, you will have more acceleration first, which will lead to more coagulation. When you have more coagulation, you have more clots, they will occlude the vessels leading to tissue hypoxia, and now the skin cells will die. Is it cell homicide or suicide? It's homicide. It's skin necrosis because suicide is apoptosis. If you already have protein C or protein S deficiency, you are more liable to skin necrosis if you take warfarin. Think about it. If you have a genetic problem that affects your breaks, you already having a loose breaks because you are not changing the pads or the rotors or the calibers. Your breaks suck. Now you are taking warfarin to inhibit the breaks. Are you going to have any breaks at all? No. When there are no breaks, what's left? The accelerator of what? Of coagulation. You will have lots of thrombosis leading to lots of skin necrosis. So if there is a patient with protein CNS deficiency, please don't put them on warfarin. What if I don't have any other drugs but warfarin? Use low dose warfarin. If you have other anticoagulants, please go for it. Now quiz time for my heroes. What's the difference among protein C? C-reactive protein and C-peptide? Let me know down below in the comments. And by the way, I've made a video about C-reactive protein before. It's in my playlist about rheumatology. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Get all of my notes and all of my hematology cases by going to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense.